So your septum is gone. Oh, you lost the entire septum? Yeah, all the way back. Oh, my God. It all started because I had a little bleeding spot on my nose. I went to a dermatologist, and they looked at it, said, yes, it's basal cell. We just need to remove it with a Mohs surgery. Yeah. So that's very intimidating. It was really scary. So I said, I wonder if there are any alternatives. Mm -hmm. So I started looking that up. One of them was called Black Sav. Black Sav? I thought, I'm going to get it all. If there's extra there, I'm going to uh, get it. The more is better theory. Yeah, I didn't follow directions. It's kind of like rubbed it all in my cream. Yep, I went to bed and wake up the next morning. And I mean, already my face had started to swell. Then after a few days, it starts to turn dark. Yeah. Then this sunk in. Oh. At that point, you're going, uh-oh. Oh. oh. Crap. Crap. Some homeopathic medicines work when the instructions are followed, but I always recommend seeing a medical professional. When I saw her, I was devastated. Then we started looking for someone who could restore her nose. I had to have the forehead flap surgery. So what's happening? Why are you here? I think it looks funny, the profile. There's a dip here, and I think that makes the tip look even pointier. And then I can't breathe well through my left side. It's really narrow. So I had some good news and bad news. OK. When we look at you, we see something bulky. Yeah. It's a thick flap. Yep. The good news about that part is that's stuff that we can hopefully play with. OK. But I think what I have to do is I have to remove everything, kind of deconstruct everything and try to rebuild it, and that's what I'm really good at. How are you? Great. I'm doing fantastic. How are you? So let me introduce you. This is Ruth, our medical micropigmentation specialist. Hi. How nice are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi. If I had known that you could cover up a medical scar with tattooing, I probably would have done it by now. But I had no idea. So I, yeah, I am over the moon to know that there's such a thing. Let's do it. Oh, OK, that hurts. It feels like you're taking a rag and spinning it really fast like a car wash. <laughs> and it's doing like that. All the pain from today is definitely worth it, because in the end, it, this is going to be done with and gone and no more tattoo concealer. Before my surgery, I made the decision to try to cure my own cancer. In the process, I ended up losing the entire tip of my nose. And then after multiple reconstructive surgeries, I was left with a bulbous and a pointy nose. But now, having made the decision to have the full reconstructive surgery, I do feel like it was the best decision I could have made. And I feel like I do trust myself again. I think this is as good and as close to a Matt Damon nose as I could have asked for. I mean, look at this profile. Do you see that? Come on. Miss Lisa, how are you, Dr. Nassif? I'm just fine. How are you doing? Hi, Lisa. Terry DeBro. Hi, nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Paul? And your relationship is? This is my husband. Very good. So we've been married 12 years. Well, I was 22 when we met, and she was 37. Yeah. Ooh, 15 so, years. 15, age 15 year difference. Yeah. yeah. So well, I'm not offended if anybody calls me a cougar. I mean, men marry younger women all the time. I want to look more like his wife and not his mother. So you had a facelift. Do you have any improvement, or is it no. worse? Oh, no, it's, it's completely worse. Actually, within three weeks, I knew something was wrong. As the swelling, the more of the swelling went down, I could see my, my jowls coming back here. Okay. And then These bands. I call them waddles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I couldn't open my mouth. I couldn't, I mean, I couldn't even bite a sandwich at that time. So when I went back to talk to him about it, he goes, Lisa, he goes, I did nothing wrong. And he shows me these pictures, my before and after. He goes, look, I made you look 10 years younger. And I'm like, that's my before picture. He picked up the before <laughs> photo yes. and did that? And then he didn't know what to say. After Lisa came out of surgery, you could see the difference in the actual surgery which she had done, and you could see the difference in her personality. So it was definitely a, a mental impact. It was, uh, it was a big blow. I've gone to five different plastic surgeons, and they've all said that this would be a difficult thing to fix because of the way it dips in. This is actually one of the most difficult things to correct uh -huh. after you've had surgery. Lisa has what we call a cobra deformity. That's when the platysmal bands are very prominent, and they look more prominent because all the tissue in the midline has been removed, and that's the hollow part of it. When you have a problem like that, it's very interesting, number one, and two, it's very difficult to fix. How is all this affecting your life? I try to stay away from public as much as possible. She, I think she's so self-conscious about how she looks now after the surgery that she just kind of stays the house a lot more. Do you feel this has caused some depression? Oh, yeah, yeah. 
I'm glad you're with us. Me too. You know, so that's why we need to examine you. Mm -hmm. And we have to really see what we need to do. Okay. okay. So let's go in the exam room. Okay. It appears that your muscles were already kind of separated before, but there's some fat on them. And when there's some fat on them, you can't really see it right, right. that much. So we think that he did some aggressive liposuction in the area, and now you have that oversuctioned, hollow area called the cobernic deformity. You know, as it comes out, you know, the two edges of it that are prominent, that's your bands. After we do this, I do want to try to extend around your hair in the front and give you more of a vertical lift. Mm -hmm. So another deep, plain face lift, OK? So in essence, what you're having is a revision neck and facelift or some type of volumization of this middle part of what we call the subentum. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Scary I stuff, so. I don't right? Think so. Heart I surgery. Mean, I... You got the right person to do this, though. Before my surgery, I had a King Cobra neck, and I looked older than I did before I had my surgery. I would shy away from events with my kids because I was embarrassed of constantly being asked if I was their grandmother. Thanks to Dr. Nassif, my neck is smooth. I look 10 years younger. I'm able to hold my head up high and stand with my kids as a proud mother and as a proud wife of a man that's 15 years younger. Say what you want, but I'm one with a hot young husband. So can you just tell us how it all started? There were some difficulties in my household and I left home at 14. And I ended up from there moving in with older men. Those relationships were very abusive. And my nose was probably broken at least two times, maybe three. Oh. From the physical abuse from mm -hmm. one of the boyfriends? Yeah. No one should be abused physically or emotionally. Ellen went through years of abuse and really needed an adult to stand up for her. So when did you get your nose done? I was 25. The doctor, his bedside manner from the get-go was pretty bad. He didn't really listen to me and he said, no, 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 I've been doing this a long time. You don't need to tell me what to do, I know what to do. So obviously you did not go to him. No, I did. <laughs> I had one surgery and two revisions with my surgeon. All within the same year? Oh, yeah. Usually, the rule of thumb is to wait at least one year between each surgery. So it is rare for a patient to undergo three rhinoplasties in one year. After the fourth surgery, there was literally no cartilage on either side Whoa. of my nose. It was completely caved in, and the tip was as it always had been. And it gets sort of reddish and even a little purple yeah, sometimes. Yeah, I can see that. You can see it from mm -hmm. here. So you get yeah. a little bit of this ischemic this... changes. That means the blood supply starts to kind of diminish. Yeah. Okay, well, that's, that's a very thing. scary thing, by the way. Her blood supply is not great. That just increases the risk of tip necrosis or tissue death at the time of another rhinoplasty. So that's obviously very scary. What are your goals? To have it feel like it is not shifting anymore. And down here, it feels almost like it could pop through the skin yeah. at some point. Yeah. So I'm very worried about it. One very good thing is the upper half of your nose, mm -hmm. which is the bone, is like perfect. I'm a little surprised that her bones look this good right now. Maybe the surgeon did do something right. So it looks like I'm not going to have to do anything with her bones for surgery. I'm going to have to most likely reconstruct some of the tip cartilage. Where do you think I'm going to need tissue from? Ribs. Rib. And I'm going to want to take some tissue from your ears. Then around here, I'm going to see what I can do to get rid of that bassa mm -hmm. to actually put some tissue that's covering your rib also in between your cartilage and your skin so we can add a little bit of extra cushion there. Before my surgery, my nose was crooked, cartilage was sticking out. But now, thanks to Dr. Nassif, my nose is smooth, stable, and straight. I feel like my fight is finally over, and now I'm ready to help others break the cycle of abuse. My name is Kofa, and I live with sarcoidosis, which has left my face with skin and bones. Sarcoidosis is an autoimmune disease kind of similar to lupus. For me, it affects my skin. I was 19 years old when my mom started noticing that around my eyes, you could see that it was a little bit puffy, a little bit swollen, and I did a lot of blood tests, but the doctors did not know what was going on. And by 2012, my face started leaning and it just kept going. I was just like, uh, are you gonna stop? Come on now. <laughs> and it just ended up being like this where I have hollow cheeks. It wasn't until 2015 that a doctor finally figured out that I had sarcoidosis. I had an emotional breakdown. It was really tough. I started going to the doctors and I've done everything from derma rolling, putting collagen creams on my face. Nothing's happening. I have my angles down packed when it comes to selfies, don't get me wrong. But sometimes I feel like giving up. 
I'm tired of feeling devastated and pissed off. Like, why is this happening? These bones, girl, don't be gone. <laughs> Cause it's time for Juicy Face again. Juicy Face. <laughs> Kofa. Hi. How are you? Hi. Nice Good to see you. How you doing, lady? Nice <laughs> so this is my anesthesiologist, Dr. Mess. He's the world specialist in this facial filling process for you. I mean, he's the guy who got the stuff FDA approved, okay? I'm excited. I'm super excited to help you out. Living with sarcoidosis is very challenging. My face is skin and bones, so I'm just curious to see what I'm gonna look like. So Kofa, what's nice about this, she has some immediate filling mm -hmm. with the hyaluronic acids and then the long-term, basically your body producing your own collagen from Sculptra. Injecting Kofa, we can definitely feel the damage that the sarcoidosis has done. Usually when you put on a needle and inject, the needle goes back and forth real easy. However, with Kofa, the needle is not flexible and there's a lot of ridges on the cheek. These are all signs of some inflammatory process that has occurred in Kofa's face. Smile for me. And this is just the beginning. That's just the beginning. Wow. My face has regained its fullness. I look like myself again, and I feel great. My juicy face is back. <laughs> my name's Laura, and I can tell from experience, two nostrils are better than one. There's a hole in my nose now that leads directly down to my throat. Everything's gone. When I go to public places, I'm always strategically standing in a certain way, because anywhere I go, people stare at me. I always have my hands around my face or I've just put my hand under my nose. Before I got hurt, I liked my face. I mean, I had a nice nose and I didn't want to change anything about me. And what happened to me was a complete accident. About 11 years ago, my dog Brutus and I, I went to kiss the top of his head and he came up at the same time and broke my nose and his tooth went through the middle of my nose. So this part and this part, it was not attached. I went to the hospital only to be told there was really nothing that they could do for me until it healed. Then I went to a plastic surgeon. I have the surgery, I wake up and could not believe what I had saw. I was solid stitches from here all the way down right through my lip. And in the middle, I had apparently a piece of rib bone, but it was just solid, like crusted blood. A week after that, my mom said to me, Something doesn't look right. It was just getting worse. It was changing color, almost looked black. I went and saw him. I said, you need to see me. And he said, you know, well, it's infected. You know, this is probably gonna fall apart. Two, three days later after that, my rib bone just came out of the middle of my nose and I was left with nothing. No middle, no bottom, nothing. I was devastated. I couldn't even look in the mirror because it didn't look like me anymore. And still to this day, it's what, 10, 12 years later, I still don't like looking in the mirror. I don't like having my picture taken. I mean, it's, it's terrible. So your septum is gone. You mm -hmm. lost the entire septum? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all the way back. Oh my God, look at that. So there's some tissue. There is literally nothing left in Laura's nose. No recognizable anatomical structures. I've never seen anything like this in my career. But I can take a small piece of rib, make an incision on the right nostril, get that nostril to push out a little bit. Mm -hmm. And we have a guy who's a professional at prosthesis. He was in the CIA. Mm -hmm. His career was made to basically take someone and make them unrecognizable. OK. Like in the movies. Yep. And I'll bet you that he can fit a prosthesis for you that will look 100 times better than that prosthesis you have. OK. How's that? Well, that would be great. That's my turn. You're awesome. You're hold up. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Let me have one of those. <laughs> <myself. laughs> uh. Here's what you've been waiting for. OK, let's okay. see. Da, da, da. Here's what you've been waiting for. I'm extremely Smoke. excited. Today is the day. How I will know this prosthetic is the right fit is, number one, that it's not going to slide back into my nose, where I think it's going to end up in my brain, and that it looks real and not like something that came out of a bubble gum machine, like my last prosthetic. The way it's going to go is like that. Voila. You ready? Paper thin. You ready? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting weeks for this. Before my surgery, my nose was hollowed out like a pumpkin. The right side had collapsed, the nostrils were gone, and I was constantly stared at in public. But thanks to Dr. Nassif and Robert Barron, I have two nostrils and a prosthetic that fits securely and also looks great. Instead of a black hole, I finally have a nose that I don't mind people staring at. Hopefully now I won't embarrass my teenage son. <laughs>